Happy Sabbath, dear viewer. I hope you really had a nice week. We also want to invite you in a very special way to uh, this episode of uh, this week's lesson discussion. We're in lesson number seven, and today uh, we're here together with uh, my elder, Elder Hesborn, and Mom, Mary Claire. Maybe just Elder say hi, and then Mom to say hi, and then I request Mom to pray with us as we begin this week's lesson discussion. Happy Sabbath, viewers, and welcome to our lesson discussion this Sabbath. Amen. Happy Sabbath, viewers. I hope you've had a blessed week, and welcome to our lesson discussion today. Amen. Before we start, shall we pray? Okay. Our gracious and loving Father in heaven, we come before the throne of grace this Sabbath morning to praise you, to worship you, and to adore you. Thank you for blessings that have been ours through the week, for the opportunity to be here this Sabbath morning to share thy word. As we start this lesson discussion, we surrender ourselves into your hands, that Lord may you speak to us first, and then use us to be able to share your word with our online viewers. As we now start, be with us, your spirit guide us, but above all, prepare us for your second coming. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. So this week we are talking about motivated by hope. And uh, remember we are still under the title The Great Controversy. So as I was looking at this particular uh, the title that we have amid the controversy and we are talking about people motivated by hope. That it is hope that inspires people to consciously make the decisions they make amid this particular great controversy. And our key text is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, uh, verse 9. And I will read. It says, And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So I see the constant aspect of we have waited. So these people have hope. You know, when somebody waits... Uh, if you, wait, if you wait without hope, you're probably wasting time. <laughs> but if you're waiting with hope, then you're waiting for something. So it, they, it constantly repeats that we have waited for him. And now in the scriptures, um, one of the central themes that we find is uh, that of uh, Christ's second return. And this has in the past inspired many people to we, we look at after, at the period after the Reformation when uh, uh when uh, when uh, when the ref after the remo uh, reformation in europe f uh founded and it was hampered by divisions and strife then we see pro uh, protestantism rising and people beginning to pick truths here and there so people begin to learn uh, uh the this the aspects of the truth that were lost and this includes that of the second coming of uh, of jesus christ and we also read of this man called uh, william miller this particular farmer who dedicated uh, part of his life to uh, studying the scriptures verse by verse. In fact, I was reading somewhere, it says that uh, as he was reading through, he was reading at the speed at which he was reading at uh, is that which he will not go to the next verse until he has understood everything he has read previously. So uh, this man, we also saw some experience. I believe we are going to get this uh, as we continue in the lesson, what happened to... Uh, his movement that he began. So this week's lesson, basically, we are going to examine why the second coming of Christ has filled the hearts of believers with joy throughout the centuries. And most importantly, how can we ourselves prepare for uh, this particular uh, event that is coming? Now, there are very wonderful promises in the Bible, including that of the second return of Christ. And to invite you, Mom, to share with us uh, the, the promise of Christ's return and what does that mean to our faith and maybe you'll also share with us uh, what are we supposed to do as we anticipate uh, this particular time as we look forward to uh, receiving Christ the second time how about that anticipation Karibu. thank you Gerald mm -hmm. I was just thinking about the title of today's lesson motivated by hope mm -hmm. hope helps us to remain committed to our goals it gives us a reason to continue hanging in there, mm -hmm. to continue fighting, mm -hmm. to continue that our circumstances will improve sometime. Mm -hmm. So even as Christians, we hang in there with hope. Mm -hmm. 
waiting for the second coming of Christ. I was talking about somebody, their business is difficult now, mm -hmm. and you owe people money, you've taken their goods. So they say they keep giving hope mm -hmm. to their suppliers so that we all have hope as Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even in difficult situations, hope will always help us. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look at the promise of his return, about the second coming of Christ. Or something, is something you have to embrace and look forward to without fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, we must have some hope as we look forward to the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Protestant reformers and the pilgrims who left Holland for the new world mm -hmm. were longing for the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. for them it was going to be a very joyous event. Mm -hmm. They eagerly anticipated the coming of Christ, so they had a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. And John Wycliffe was also looking forward to the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. So the coming of Christ is going to be a very glorious event. Mm -hmm. It's something mm -hmm. we must all look forward to. It's something that I have hope each day, and I wake up and mm -hmm. and I say. Today, he will walk with me, and I have hope whatever circumstances mm -hmm. are ahead of me. Mm -hmm. If you look at Titus mm -hmm. chapter 2 and verse 13, the Bible tells us, mm -hmm. looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So Titus here tells us that we as believers mm -hmm. are looking forward to a blessed hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And this hope is the coming and the resurrection of Jesus Christ gave us some hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. And his second coming gives us hope, just looking forward to his second coming. Mm -hmm. And the event is referred to as a blessed hope. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there's multiple emphasis in the Bible about the second coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. And in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, the Bible tells us that let not your hearts be troubled. Mm -hmm. Believe in God. Mm -hmm. Believe also in, in, in me. me. In my father's house, what is happening there? There are many, there mansions. many mansions. Many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what is he going to do for us, Elder? To prepare a place, place for us. Yes. And he says, and when I go and prepare a place for you, what I, will he do? I will come again. Will come he will come again and receive take and you to myself mm -hmm. where I'm going to be with you forever. Forever. Amen. Amen. That is so much hope. Mm -hmm. I know there's a place prepared for me. Mm -hmm. And there's enough room for each one of us. Mm -hmm. So as we live in this world, we are troubled. Mm -hmm. And now there is so much problem. <laughs> The other day I was looking at the, the floods we are going through now. Mm -hmm. And there was this land cruiser and people are standing on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you men like taking risks. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a, a river going like this. The other side, they are on tarmac this side. Mm -hmm. And the other side was tarmac. Mm -hmm. So there was like water passing in between. Mm -hmm. yes. And these guys were stuck on this side. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to go to the other side. Mm -hmm. So because it has a carrier, they mm. went and stood, stood on top. On the carrier. So inside mm. was full <coughs> and on top were people. <laughs> so the people remaining on this side kept discouraging them, do not go, do not go. But this land cruiser decided to take the risk. Take. Mm. So halfway through, these people on this side are screaming. And these guys, the car starts so. wavering. Mm. Yeah. So one person jumps back into the river, but the water was coming with a lot of force. Mm -hmm. And what happened then is there was a cliff. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the land cruiser went <coughs> down the cliff and everybody went into that water. water. It mm -hmm. was moving fast and furious. Mm -hmm. Why did they risk this? Because they had hoped they would pass through, get to the other side. Mm -hmm. They are but, motivated by some hope. Yes, some <laughs> hope, yeah. So you find that we all need to have some hope, mm -hmm. regardless of your rank, mm -hmm. regardless of your status, mm -hmm. 
because as human beings we are all going through challenges mm. yeah the way the world is today in this country mm-hmm. we all need some hope amen so even the best of christians mm. me and you mm. elder mm. head of choir we all need to have hope sure and to look forward to some hope and that's why he's telling us in my father's house there are many there mansions, many mansions. Yeah. and he has prepared for each one for us yeah <coughs> and god seems to desire our love and our friendship mm-hmm. for somebody mm-hmm. to say i've gone to prepare for you how do you feel valued you feel encouraged yes yes yeah. loved loved mm-hmm. encouraged there is hope yeah mm-hmm. whatever is happening there is somebody who has gone ahead of me to prepare for me mm-hmm. And this is the hope we should have today as medicine of our Christian life, yeah? Mm, yeah. That no matter what you are going through there is hope. Amen. Yeah, so we must trust entirely on Christ. Mm-hmm. We must rest on him and reservedly. Mm-hmm. Let's not have any kuangalia pande ama pande ile. We should lay hold firmly mm-hmm. and lean on him totally. Amen. So this is a prescription which our master urges us on the attention as he talks to his disciples. Mm-hmm. And the great shepherd always knowing the condition of his flock. Mm-hmm. What the world is going through. The other day covid went, now it is floods. Mm-hmm. The Lord knows what you are going through. Mm-hmm. And he is speaking to us mm-hmm. and telling us this wonderful words of encouragement. Mm-hmm. He has gone prepare place yeah, for, for us, us. Mm-hmm. so our assurance is built on this mm-hmm. as christians yeah mm-hmm. and as christians we should also be true believers and welcome these happinesses mm-hmm. is offering to us mm-hmm. prepare i'm going to prepare then i will come and take you imagine a us. father telling the child i will come and take you yes mm-hmm. i'll yes. take you home mm-hmm. So there are rooms, dwelling places, apartments for each one of us. Mm. Durable, everlasting. Mm-hmm. A place where we are going to live with hope. Mm. And then what makes the second coming of Jesus an eagerly awaited event? Mm-hmm. Why do you look forward to the coming of Christ elder? Um one reason why I would look forward to the coming of Jesus mm-hmm. is that the coming of Jesus brings an end to what we are going through now mm-hmm. because when Christ returns mm-hmm. the current suffering the current issues that we are going through mm-hmm. they will come to an end amen yes that amen. is why i'm looking forward to the second coming of jesus Christ. yes mm-hmm. yes what about our son here <laughs> you know i i just the thought that there is something better than the world we are seeing today Yes. that is that that itself is enough hope in my heart and the fact that uh, i have learned that we fell into sin then there's somebody who died to save us from this particular eternal loss mm. i can't wait to see this man face to face face to face in as mm. much as he can dwell in my heart by faith but he says also that where he is he wants us to be there yeah. also physically so yes. i'm looking forward to it yes mm. I had a Bible for my children mm-hmm. where there was a gate. Mm-hmm. And this child is going through the gate, the world is behind them, mm-hmm. and heaven is on the other side. Yes. So they're opening this gate to go across to the other side. And it says when you go to the other side, mm-hmm. there's going to be no more sickness. Mm-hmm. There'll be no more suffering. Mm-hmm. There'll be no more death, mm-hmm. no more separation. that will be the end of poverty. Mm. I'll not be budgeting anymore <laughs> when I go across <laughs> that gate. <laughs> Because mm. there will be no poverty once we go to heaven. Mm. There'll be no injustice, mm. no oppression. Mm. Yeah? It will be the end of struggles, the end of these conflicts we are going through. Mm. Yeah, we are always trying to make decisions. There'll be no more war. Mm-hmm. And it is also uh, the Bible says that uh what the eye has not seen yes. what the ear has, has not heard yes. 
Yeah, and, the and therefore a reason to look forward to that because we think of beautiful places mm. but that place that we have never seen yes it really gives us a lot of hope to mm. just keep praying that i need to be there mm-hmm. yes yes mm. so it focuses on a future world of peace mm. a place of happiness mm-hmm. a place of joy mm-hmm. and you are in fellowship with christ forever and ever amen forever and ever mm-hmm. and then when christ comes mm-hmm. it, the coming of the lord has been in all ages the hope of his followers so it just reemphasizing about his second coming mm-hmm. and the hope that it's giving us when the thessalonian christians were filled with grief as they buried their loved ones mm-hmm. you know we all hope that christ will come when we are alive alive yes. because it looks like it is tomorrow mm. yeah. the circumstances around us so when the thessalonians buried their loved ones mm. who had hoped to live to witness the coming of the lord they got very discouraged mm. and paul their teacher pointed them to the resurrection that will take place at this when the christ comes mm. so it's just reemphasizing that whatever we are going through let us look forward to the coming of Christ and mm. the dead in Christ you are told what will happen to them they shall they rise will up. rise up yes mm. they will rise up so we are anticipating the time when Christ will come mm. as christians sure that is my hope every day mm. and i keep asking myself when will he come I look at the things happening around us mm. and say if Christ does not come today he may have mm. to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> <laughs> because even the days of Abraham mm. it looks like we are a lot worse than they were the days, they yeah. were mm. so what will happen when Christ comes we are told that although the protestant reformers believed the literal visible audible and glorious return of Christ gradually the understanding of this biblical truth changed mm. Mm. they waited yes and then they what waited. started happening they probably they probably gave up yes <laughs> yes then such that uh, they, what they held so dearly they were really anticipating mm. to be in the near future yeah. they probably began losing sight of it slowly time yeah. after time maybe. Yeah. Yes. And some were disappointed. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because they knew that for sure Christ is coming. Mm. Yes. Yes. Just like us now it's yet looking so bad we, we are hoping like it's coming tomorrow. tomorrow yes. Yeah, so mm. the the wait became long. Mm. Yeah, the popular 19th century preachers thought that Christ would come to establish his kingdom on earth and usher in the 1000 years of peace. Mm. So for them it was going to be established mm, here yeah, here right with here. us mm. and because of that weight they became spiritually weary yeah. and their commitment started going down going down yeah mm-hmm. their spiritual value started <coughs> going, going down, down as well. because their weight was becoming too long mm-hmm. and similarly Christ disciples also misunderstood the nature of the messiah's Messiah. coming mm-hmm. yeah true and they thought that he would come as a conquering general you know yes something different yes probably to deliver them from the the roman the oppression yes yes mm. yes the troubles some neighbors yeah that yoke <laughs> of the roman bondage <laughs> to deliver them from that condemnation yes yeah. and that they failed to understand the manner of christ's coming mm. disciples who spent time with him. Mm. And in Acts 9 verses 9 to 11, <clears throat> I just pick a portion of it. Mm-hmm. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes mm. and a cloud mm. hid him from their yeah. sight. Mm-hmm. They were looking intently up into the sky as he as he, as he went. Mm-hmm. So you see that Christ ascended and went. Mm. And the disciples saw as he was going and now he will live for good until his return so he was going mm. until his second return mm. 
So after giving the promise of the Holy Spirit, Jesus returns to heaven mm. before their eyes. They see him ascending. Mm. And they're not going to stand there waiting forever. Would still be also be looking up, mm. waiting for Christ to come. Mm. But we are told in Matthew 24, verse 27, mm. For as a lightning cometh out of the east, so and shineth shine. even mm. unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. Of man. Mm. So you find that during the 19th century, Protestants distorted the doctrine of the second coming, mm. like you mentioned, mm. by teaching that Jesus would establish an earthly kingdom mm. of a thousand years of peace, <coughs> or that there would be a period of a thousand years of peace before the second coming of Christ. Of mm. Christ. So you find that uh, the reformers taught that the millennium would mm. be preached by the second coming mm. and that this would be, when Christ comes, what will happen? Mm. Literally, in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20, mm. says, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I'm coming soon. Mm. Amen. 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 Yeah. So here we are being affirmed that he is actually literally going to, yeah. to, come. to come. Yes. <coughs> so we cannot claim to know exactly when that moment is going to be. Yes. We are all just waiting with hope. hope. Yes. Mm. And then also Christ's second coming is going to be visible. Mm. It's not going to be a secret, a secret. thing. Mm. Universal. Yes. Every mm. eye will we'll see him. We'll see him. Yes. Mm. So not not a particular sect <coughs> in my village will say Christ has appeared in my village and the rest of the yes the world mm. haven't seen him. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your village, Karachuan? <laughs> 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 so they're so, not selfish that only. So so it will uh, from from uh, what the explanation, it's like now the coming of Christ. It should be something that it's universal. Every yes. exactly. be able yes. to see him, so that yes. nobody will say Christ appeared to a particular physical mm. uh, within some geographical area, not seen elsewhere. Yes, yes. Mm. Okay. it's going to be a public event. Mm. No matter where you are, as long as you're alive, you're going to see him. Mm -hmm. Yes, his second coming will be audible. Yeah. Mm. In Thessalonians chapter one, First Thessalonians four sixteen. Mm. I will just read so that we, 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 we are within time. Mm. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. With the shout. a shout. Mm. So we are going to hear. And the voice of an archangel mm -hmm. and with the trumpet of God. A trumpet is? Will be heard. Will be heard. Yeah, so it will mm. be audible. Mm. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Mm -hmm. Then we who are alive mm -hmm. remain and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. So it's going to be visible, it's going to be audible. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the second coming of Christ is going to be glorious. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The Bible in First Thessalonians, again, chapter 4, verse 13 to 18, I'll just summarize it. Okay. It talks about believers who have died. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not give grief like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Mm. He's telling us to be able to have hope mm. because Christ is going to come and take us home. Take us yeah? Mm -hmm. So, when Christ came first, when he came as a child mm. and was born in a manger, mm. what happened? Very few people mm. recognize actually, yeah, yeah, that recognize. he was uh, he was existing. Yes. Yes. Mm. So the, being born in a manger and just a few people came. Mm. Mm. But the second time what's going to happen? Every eye will see him. Will see him. Mm. Every ear will hear will him. Hear. So we are saying it's audible. It's not mm. going to be a secret, yeah? Mm. So one of the most solemn and yet most gracious truths revealed in this Bible is that Christ coming, mm -hmm. Christ is coming mm -hmm. to complete the great work of redemption. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So the second advent is the very keynote of the sacred scripture. Mm -hmm. So from the day when the first pair, mm. our parents, mm. sinned, mm. from that day we've been waiting with hope mm -hmm. that Christ is coming. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. From the days of Adam and Eve mm -hmm. until today, we are still waiting for him to come with hope. Yes. The only way to be ready for Christ mm -hmm. is to be ready all the all time. Times. All the time. Yes. I don't know how you can be ready all the time. Sometimes I find I've slept. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder <laughs> if Christ came today, <laughs> what would happen to me? Mm. So the only way to be ready is to always be ready, ready. and to stay ready. Stay ready. ready. Yes. So that's Amen. what I would say until now. Mm, that's, yeah. It's it's been a wonderful exposition, and as you are sharing, I was just th thinking through. You know, when you mentioned uh, the second coming of Christ being glorious, my mind was drawn to the moment when Christ resurrected. Mm. The Bible records that there is mm. just one angel who came and rolled back the stone. I was just reading through and I realized uh, the verses like, uh, that is chapter Matthew chapter 28, just verse 2 and 3 says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Mm. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. So I was mm. just wondering, this is just one angel. And he's coming with <laughs> tens of thousands. Yes. So I can only imagine uh, how that would be. And you also mentioned, you know, when you're talking about the second coming of Christ, I was just thinking mm -hmm. this as I invite others. Because now we want to look at uh, one of the men who uh, picked this particular truth, though he endured the disappointment, mm -hmm. but uh, still about the hope that he had for this particular second coming of Christ. I was just imagining now, us as Christians, believers, if Christ went back to heaven without the promise of coming again, mm. Mm. now what would that mean to our faith? <laughs> would we still be uh, Christians if Jesus just resurrected and said, okay, I'm, I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> so the fact that Jesus Christ came, lived among men, showed us the way, died, resurrected and said, in fact, the verse you are reading, there's the other portion of it that in the Acts, that as they were looking as they were looking to Christ going, two angels appeared and told them, You men of Galilee, why are you doing? Why are you looking at him? They see the same way he's going, the same way he will come back. Mm -hmm. So this forms a very central part, uh, a central theme of our scripture. So Elder, there's this man, William Miller, yes. who we've understood how that uh, this uh, this farmer, this was a farmer. Mm -hmm. So this farmer, how that he read the scriptures. And there was that particular aspect of the scripture that led to the great disappointment. Mm. Please enlighten us now uh, <laughs> concerning this particular theme. I know you talk, talk about William Mill and the Bible and also the, 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 the 2,300 days. days. Mm. Mm. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Gerald. Mm -hmm. When we get to read the story of William Miller, First of all, he's, um, he was an American um, farmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that is silent because what comes out is the reformer that he was. Uh, yes, and William Miller existed uh, in the late uh, 1700 to early 1800. Mm -hmm. And one thing that really stands about William Miller is his dedication to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. He read the Bible mm -hmm. and... He, he thought, I would say that he thought he understood this very well. And, um, <clears throat> and so William Miller, uh, just a bit of um, uh, something about him is that um, he was involved in a war in 1812. Mm -hmm. And having survived that war changed his life in a way because he said that it would not have been possible for me to survive this war mm -hmm. without somebody somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also about his belief, he believed that God was a God who created the universe and after creating the universe, he went away and 
the universe is now existing on its own. Um, I think that is, um, say that he's, uh, he's a deist. Yeah, he believed in deism. Mm. He never believed that God was interacting with the universe. God is interacting with with human beings. That he's interested in the affairs of the universe. Yes, that he's not interested in the affairs of, the, of what is happening. But then when he survived the war, and that was in 1812, mm. this changed his perception and this changed the way he was uh, looking at who God is. And, and what um, and what God is, mm. and so William Miller, being one of uh, he was a Baptist, mm. and he was uh, he became ardent in reading the Bible, mm. to be able to understand mm. each and every verse of that Bible. Mm. Um, <clears throat> William Miller, we told that he read the Bible. He started with the Book of Genesis, and with his pen and paper, mm. he wanted to be able to understand each and every section mm. of the Bible. He was looking at the scripture word by word. He was comparing mm. uh, the scripture, one verse with another, uh, with another verse. Mm. And actually something that is very interesting because I kept on asking myself that as we study uh, the great controversy, then we come to this topic, motivation by hope, motivated by hope. Mm. How is this coming in the great controversy? Because we know about uh, the deception in the Garden of Eden starting in the book of Genesis. Mm. And as we go through the Bible, um, we get to find out some of the things that were happening. For example, now with the book of Daniel, which is really bringing out um, the various kingdoms that we have mm. that existed. And the ultimate of it is that there is this kingdom that will be everlasting and I just want to connect it to what we have just uh, discussed a few minutes ago. The everlasting kingdom is the one that Christ is coming with. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about motivated by hope, having looked at the background of great controversy, how things are happening, the war between mm -hmm. evil and good, the war between God and Satan, we still have hope because at the end of it all, the great controversy, God is going to be the victorious one in Amen. this great controversy. Amen. And so um, as we look at, uh, as we study the scriptures and get to know about William Miller, mm. he was motivated by hope because in the Bible he found out that there is the second coming of Christ. Mm. Christ is going to come again. Mm. And there is a relationship between us and God. Mm. God created us and he has kept a relationship between us and him. While Satan is moving us away from God, has deceived, um, uh, deceived Eve in the book of, uh, I mean, in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be closer to him. God wants us to have a relationship uh, with him. Mm -hmm. And so William Miller is really encouraging to us because... Mm -hmm the kind of um, story that we get around his background mm. and then getting to understand the Bible, there was the revelation of God to him of the times and things that were going to happen. Something that um, is also very interesting here is that William Willa is among, amongst the many people who are reading the Bible mm. and trying to interpret and understand each and every section of the Bible. And when it comes to uh, the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel talks about mm. the 2,300 yes. days. Mm. Uh, that is coming in the book of, um, the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 14. It says that it will take 2,300 evenings and mornings mm. and the sanctuary will mm. be consecrated. Mm. Um, there are... There are numbers that I will mention here, number of numbers that are coming in here and years that are coming in here that mm. calls for us to be able to just ask that what do these numbers mean to us? What do these years mm. uh, mean to us as we, as, we, as we look at the second coming of Christ because mm. that, is the, that is the ultimate. And so um, William Miller observed that um, events that were that events that um, had been predicted were precisely fulfilled. And um, 
something that I would mention here is that when it comes to their prediction of the times, they predicted that Christ would come around 1844, mm. but that did not happen. That actually calls for us to be able to look at the scriptures again and say that what exactly do these scriptures mean? Mm -hmm. And we get that from William Miller because as much as he was disappointed, as much as many people were disappointed, um, William Miller went back to the scriptures to find out mm -hmm. what exactly do these 2,300 mm -hmm. um, days mean, mean to us? Mm -hmm. um, it is time, but it is not the ordinary time mm -hmm. because 2,300 days, uh, if we look at it in the ordinary sense, mm -hmm. that would just be about, we could be talking about seven, seven about eight seven years. or eight years, mm -hmm. thereabouts. Mm -hmm. But then we find that um, there is, this is the prophetic time mm -hmm. in which the Bible says that a day stands for one year mm -hmm. and we are talking about 2,300 300 yes. years. Mm -hmm. And digging deep into the Bible, we find that these 2,300 years, he wanted to find out exactly when does this time start mm. and when does this, uh, does this end. Mm. And so looking at history, looking at the Bible, we find that these 2,300 mm. um, years started in 457. The event that... Uh, the event that is critical here mm -hmm. is that this is the third decree of uh, <coughs> uh, King Artaxerxes mm -hmm. of rebuilding uh, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We know that Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. um, the Israelites were taken into captivity. Mm -hmm. And so um, King Artaxerxes mm -hmm. made a decree that from that, at that point in time, that is 457 BC, that is before, before Christ, mm. there was going to be a rebuilding of Jerusalem. Mm. There was going to be restoration of Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And so uh, starting at 457, uh, if we move into history, mm. moving from 457, mm. we have the Bible talking about mm. the 70, sev 77, mm. yes, um, again, if you look at the 77, mm. we have 70 times 7. If mm. these are seven weeks, 70 weeks, mm. and each week we know has one, uh, seven, seven days, mm -hmm. we end up with 490. Mm. Mm. Yes, this is 490 days, which again in the prophetic um, language turns out to be 490 years. Mm. Mm. As we follow that history and we go through the 490 years, mm. What happens is that Christ was born. When Christ is born, mm -hmm. the counting changes again. Mm -hmm. And so we start with from before Christ, mm -hmm. we move on to after, um, after death. Mm -hmm. So we have that period between 457 moving into the time period when Christ was born mm -hmm. and Christ dies um, in AD uh, 27. That gives us uh, the, <coughs> the 400 and um, that, first of all, gives us the 490. And, and 90. And he's actually baptized. Yes, actually baptized in, mm. in, in uh, AD 27. 27. Mm. Yes, and then three and a half years after that, mm. Christ is crucified. Mm. Three and a half years after that, we have the stoning of, of Stephen. Stephen. Mm. That gives us the 490 mm. years. Mm. And then um, from that is now AD 34. Mm. From AD 34... Mm. Uh, we are left with 1,810 years. Mm. This takes us, if we add this, it takes us to 1844. Mm -hmm. And so William Miller, having studied the Bible very diligently mm. with other people, they knew that at this point in time, mm. Christ is going to come. And they remained very hopeful that in 1844, mm. Christ is coming. Mm. I want to imagine that uh, during this time, Mm. William Miller was probably um, fairly advanced in age because in 1844 and reading history, uh, he died about 1849. That was just about five years. That was After just this. about uh, five years before his death. Mm. So he must have been very hopeful because during all this time he had read the Bible diligently mm. and he must have waited for this time to come that in 1844 he's going to see Christ. Mm. But then... 
what happened, Christ did not come. Yes. Amongst the people who are reading the Bible, the people who thought that, yes, I think Christ is going to come around 1843. Mm. Uh, some were saying around 1844. Mm. But 1844 came, 1843 came, 1844 came, and Christ did not did not come. Mm. One thing that is so encouraging about William Miller is that even after this happened, he did not give up. Mm. He went back to the scriptures to start looking at the scriptures to find out that mm. what exactly is the Bible saying? Because one encouraging thing again is that he believed in the Bible and for sure say that mm. this is God's word. And as human beings, there are those moments that we have read a Bible section, we have read a Bible verse, and we tend to misinterpret it, or we have not got the correct interpretation. Mm. So he went back to the Bible again, read through the Bible, and find, found out that Christ is not coming in 1844. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen at this <coughs> point in time? This is the time that Christ is moving to the most holy, holy place, to the holy of holies. Yeah. What does this mean for us? This means that this is the time that investigative judgment begins, mm -hmm. that even as we are still living, what is it that we are doing to prepare for Christ's second coming? Mm -hmm. What is my relationship with my Lord on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. I like what um, uh, Mom said earlier that the only way to get ready for the second coming, we get ready and stay ready. stay ready. Mm -hmm. And so from 1844, having looked at the Bible, the William Miller and the early reformers came to a conclusion that this is the point in which we are living in a point, we are living at a point in time that everything that we are doing is mm. laid bare and we need to ask ourselves that, am I really prepared for the second coming? Mm -hmm. As early as when I was very young, <coughs> told that Christ is coming very soon. Yes. Yes, he is coming soon. Mm. That soon can mean tomorrow, mm. but is that true? Because we are told that until... Each and every person has got this information. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, we, we can think that um, things are really bad. Um, there's a lot of suffering. But then this is the beginning of the last days. Mm -hmm. And more is yet to come. Mm -hmm. Looking back to, again, my earlier days, people were dying but not as much. Yeah. Yes, you could hear that there is one death in a village. And then after several months, another one. Another one. Mm. But these days, it's all over the place. You have to choose which one to go to. Yes, you have to choose which <laughs> funeral you are going to. Mm. Because so many people are dying. The number is alarmingly increasing yes. mm. day by day. Mm. Mm. And this tells us that we are in the beginning of the last days. Mm. And more is yet to come. Mm. At the moment in Kenya we have been experiencing the floods. Mm -hmm. And people have testified that for the longest time or ever since they were born, they have never seen anything, mm -hmm. anything like this. Mm -hmm. We see places where water is flowing over the bridge, something that has never happened ever mm -hmm. since you were born. Mm -hmm. And so this is pointing to the last days that we are living in. The focus of... Uh, as we study the lesson, the focus that uh, we need to put on is not really about the things that are happening, but put our focus on Christ. Mm -hmm. That even as we are hoping for the second coming, mm -hmm. he's not leaving us that he will go and come, but between this time and that time is coming, nothing is happening. He has given us the strength, mm -hmm. the faith, to be able to look forward to each and every day that we are living. Mm. Yes, hope is such that we are looking into the future, but because we cannot see the future, mm. God is there in the future for us. Mm. Yes, and, and the assurance that again we are getting is that um, even though I may die before the second coming of Christ, mm. 
that does not mean that I will not inherit everlasting life. Mm. Yes, those who die in Christ will see him when he come back a second time. Amen. And so um, as we look at um, motivated by hope, the longest time, uh, the longest prophetic timeline, as yeah. we look at the Bible, there are a number of prophecies that we see in the Bible, and especially in the book of Daniel. When you look at the book of Daniel chapter 7, we see the various kingdoms that are, um, <coughs> are enumerated there. They are coming and going. Uh, we go to the book of Daniel again, chapter 8. A um, bit of interpretation, the kingdoms are coming in and going. Mm. But we can look at this time frame. They are taking a shorter time. Mm. Um, but the time that we see from 457 BC mm. to 844 is a very, very long time. 2,300 yes. years in mm. total. Mm. A very, very long time. One thing that comes out here is that this is very critical for our faith because even as we are talking about the great controversy, we are talking mm -hmm. about the dark periods that people went through very difficult circumstances, those who believed in Christ. Uh, even as we are looking at those who are dedicated to read the Bible, like William Miller, those who publicly confessed their faith, like John has, the longest time prophecy brings a very critical moment in time, mm -hmm. a time in which Christ is doing investigative judgment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it should not make us be very <coughs> fearful that, oh, um, how am I going to be judged? Mm -hmm. Because Christ had died already mm -hmm. on the cross for us, we have the power of victory mm -hmm. when we believe in him. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so it gives us motivation Mm. that we are able to make it, mm. whether alive or dead, when Christ comes a second time, we will be with him. Amen. We'll be able to see him. Mm. Yes. Even under the graves, we'll be able to resurrect Amen. and see Christ when he comes a second time. Amen. Yes. Elder, I'm just, apart from being an elder, mathematics, yes. did you do mathematics? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I did mathematics. Because you're going through the years without any <laughs> reference. He's just <laughs> so relaxed and talking about them. I'm admiring that because maths and history are not my... <laughs> 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 but I'm just speaking on investigative yes. judgment, yeah? Maybe just expand for a minute. Some mm. of us are not born in the Adventist church. Yes. And maybe I'd just like to know what is investigative after 1844. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is happening to date? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So when we're talking about, um, I want to take a judgment in the, first of all, in the ordinary context. Mm -hmm. and, and this is mainly in the legal setup. Mm -hmm. When we hear that uh, today is going to be the judgment day, mm -hmm. somebody has been, um, uh, let me say, um, somebody has been, um, brought uh, under court of law, um, the trial, uh, the trial process has taken place, and therefore the day comes when the judge is to uh, pass on a verdict, mm. whether one is innocent or is accused, and what happens after that. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, that particular judgment day, it is a do or die day, mm -hmm. because I will find myself either innocent and and therefore mm. set free, free yeah. or I will find myself guilty mm. and I have to face the wrath of the law. Mm. So when we get to uh, the spiritual context or the mm. biblical context, when mm. we talk about judgment or investigative judgment, mm. this is a period in time in which we have a uh, we can make we make a decision and we make a decision to follow Christ mm. and the christian walk is sometimes very challenging mm. um today i would find myself very high up victorious i feel that yes if christ comes today i will be in heaven the following day i've done something i'm wondering that i 
Is that me? Is that me? <laughs> Will I really make it when Christ comes? Yeah. So when we talk about investigative judgment, it is the period that precedes the final judgment in which we have been given, um, uh, God has given us mm. time to be able to make our ways with him. We seek him and we have a relationship with him mm. that will always bring us closer and closer to him. Mm. Yes. Um, executive judgment, when it comes at the close of time, there will be no time to change. Mm. To change that, oh, today this has happened. No, I will mm. change and uh, get back to a different person. Mm. Yeah, so investigative judgment is very critical for us because it is this period of time that the door of mercy is open for us. Mm. Yes, we are allowed to uh, seek Christ. We are allowed to keep yearning for that relationship and asking him for a relationship that will prepare us for eternity. Mm. The book of Revelation um, uh, tells us that at the close of time, those who are righteous will remain righteous. Mm. And those who are unrighteous will remain unrighteous. Mm. And that will only happen when the door of mercy is closed. Mm. Amen. It is encouraging to know that from 1844 up to this point we are living in, the door of mercy is still open. Mm. My brother and my sister who is out there, the Lord is calling upon us mm. yes. that this is not a period in which the judgment is passed, but a period in which we have been given the opportunity to see Christ and have a relationship with him. Amen. Live with yes. hope. Live with mm. hope. Yes. Maybe I can also add something. I was just looking for a, a like singing. Mm. <laughs> there's one of our hymns. I, mm. I don't know how it just disappeared. But uh, these are the words. There's a stanza that says, uh, the work is begun with mm. those who are sleeping. Mm. Now that song is, uh, how shall we stand in that great day? Mm. So there's a stanza that says, the work is begun with those who are sleeping. And I was my mind was drawn to Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. That says, uh, Behold, I come quickly, mm. and my reward is with me. Mm. Now, if just post there. You know, when he comes, and he already is coming with the reward, mm. it means that before he's coming, mm. he has already identified who is getting what. Yes. So... That is where now, <laughs> that is where the aspect of uh, the investigative judgment that Elder is speaking about mm -hmm. comes in. And just maybe to add as we almost come to the close, you know, I am amazed at uh, at uh, at how God uh, is a planner. I mean, things happen. How how uh, the, the timelines that Elder was just speaking about, just that particular exact time, then it happens. Mm. doesn't happen that it delays with a, a year or so. Mm. Then mm. people will say, ah, this God, Maybe. yes, depending on probably. If if that wasn't the case, then probably people like William Miller who, uh, wouldn't have reached that particular date because they mm. would have calculated and then God's plan shifted mm. without notice. Mm. So the fact that uh, uh, we have the 2,300 years, the, that particular duration of prophecy, and then it says that 490 70 weeks have been cut off mm -hmm. for the Messiah, so determined to say. Then immediately in AD 27, yes. we see Christ is baptized, baptized. is anointed, mm. just the same way. And then it says that there's that period of seven days or the seven years. Now in mm. the midst of that week, that's three and a half years later. Yes. And he says that he will now be, he will cause uh, the sacrifices and oblations to cease. Mm -hmm. Then Immediately at that time, uh, around, uh, it was AD 31. AD 31. Then Jesus Christ is crucified. crucified. Now, because he's now the greatest sacrifice, so all other sacrifices that were being offered initially, mm. they now cease. They cease, yes. yes. Now that is so precise. Mm. And then later on at the end of the 490, now the Jews seal their rejection of Christ by stoning Stephen to death. Mm. Now we have the eight. 1,810 uh, 1, remaining, yes. which take us to 1844, mm. which these people got correct. The dates was, were correct, but they missed, uh, the, 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 the issue that was at hand is the previous teachings of the, the, the church mm. or the, the Bible interpretation that was there previously made them understand that the sanctuary that was to be cleansed mm. was the earth and that it would be cleansed by fire. Yeah. Mm. Now I'm tempted to believe that if 
the people in the past were faithful mm. then this man will have come to the correct understanding of what was happening mm. now the fact that it happened that initially things were not okay people misinterpreted the bible then he understood according to him though he had the calculations correct but he understood that the earth would be cleansed by fire so to to them then that meant that jesus christ would come would be back. coming yes so this is this is what i get from this entire thing that uh, mm. even the promise of jesus second coming it is not delayed mm. <laughs> i'm sure that it's christ is on time mm. and as the book you know well, when, we, when i was growing up i'm not saying that i finished growing up but <laughs> <laughs> when i was growing up i used to that is when i used to hear people people make fun of the statement that somebody sends you and you delay coming back and they say you delaying should we wait for you we wait for christ so people use that phrase <laughs> people use that phrase that yes. uh, imechelewa kama kurudi kwa yesu mm. and you delayed like the second coming of christ but peter says that uh, christ has not delayed rather mm. he has just given us time because he doesn't want any of us to perish Exactly. So I am so mm. sure that even the promise of second uh, the second coming of Christ it is not an illusion. Mm. The, the 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 authors of the Bible under the divine inspiration they are not hallucinating or something. So I'm very sure that the same way this was precise now we don't have any other time prophecy after this the mm-hmm. longest one. Uh, yes. We are all looking forward by faith to receiving the uh, Christ Jesus the righteous. And this Amen. is the hope that motivates me. I, I don't know what moti- the hope that motivates you that is the same as we come to the conclusion this is the hope that motivates me I, I meet this great controversy even as we wait to be victors with Christ so maybe a parting shot from mom and then a parting shot from elder and then we will, we'll offer prayers we finish mm-hmm. I think for me the memory text mm-hmm. just does it for me mm-hmm. when I read it and it says and it will be said in that day mm-hmm. Behold this mm. is our God we have waited for him mm. and he will save us He'll save yeah. us This is the Lord we have waited for him mm. we will be glad and rejoice Amen. in his salvation Amen. To me that's just it Amen gives Amen. me hope mm. to continue waiting for him Amen Thank you I just want to pick it up from what you have said that the second coming of Christ is not delayed mm. and that is very very encouraging because some have given hope we have heard of people saying that oh Christ is coming on such a day and people wait for Christ to come and he never comes that day mm. but then what happens some people give up they lose hope completely but this is so encouraging to us that the second coming of Christ is mm. certain it is sure that Christ is going mm. to come a second time amen and very important is that as we look at or as we've been studying this lesson about great controversy mm. it makes some people very fearful mm. yes of the great controversy mm. the second coming of Christ is the end of great controversy. Mm. Let's trust in God. Let's trust that he will take us and walk with us mm. to that time that Christ is going to take us Amen. when he comes a second time. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's indeed deep. The second coming of Christ is the end of the great controversy. Mm. Thank you so much dear viewers for joining us. I want to invite elder to offer the final prayer as we come to the end of this discussion. Shall we pray? Father in the name of Jesus, we thank you in a very special way for your word that is so encouraging. We thank you for the promise of the second coming of Jesus that you have revealed to us in the scriptures. We know not the hour nor not the time. that is going to come but it is certain that your son Jesus Christ is coming a second time it is our prayer that prepare us for the second coming of your son mm-hmm. let the hope of his coming be burning in us even as we wait for him mm-hmm. may you hold our hands and walk with us every day of our lives we know that there are many things that are happening 
people are suffering in the world, Lord. There are wars and rumors of wars, Lord. Mm. There are calamities. Mm. In all this, you are still on your throne. Yes. And God, we pray that even at this point in time, when some people are about to lose hope, it is my prayer that your spirit will hover around them, that they will not lose hope of eternity. Mm. I pray that Jehovah Lord, may you walk with us every day of our lives, that our thoughts, our words and our actions will give you glory. King of glory, even as we continue to study thy word, may your spirit reveal to us this word, Lord. We cannot do it on our own, but through the Holy Spirit. Mm. May you walk with us, may you be with us, Lord, and prepare us for eternity. For we ask this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's been a privilege, dear viewers, to have you join us for this week's lesson discussion. I know you've been really blessed and uh, so are we, even as uh, we were discussing this together. I know you may be having questions and uh, uh, concerns or comments. Please always share them in the comment section. Reach out and we will be glad to help you. Now, we also invite you to the next episode, that is lesson number eight, uh, that we will be discussing next week. We will be talking about light from the sanctuary. Our key text is from the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Uh, chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 so i request you to read in advance and we'll enjoy that discussion together otherwise i wish you a blessed week ahead and a blessed happy sabbath and may god bless you